This is part of the Infinity Analyze video tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're taking a look at the multispectral capture utility. With multispectral capture, we have the ability to adjust the settings for exposure and gain and to capture images using the different fluorescence filter cubes and to produce a composite result. And in this video tutorial, we'll go through the steps and the sequence on how to do that. New with Infinity Analyze 6.5 is this preview button, so I can disable and re-enable my live preview as required. Currently, I have an exposure set to 50 milliseconds, which is reasonably quick, with a gain set to a value of 10, which helps boost my exposure so that my live preview is bright enough so that I can get reasonably fast frame rate updates and use the live preview to focus on my sample with that high gain. And that gain may be a little higher than I'd like to capture images with, so I'm going to take advantage of the multispectral capture utility to go through uh, my filter cubes and put together a color composite in fairly few steps. When my multispectral settings have been configured, then my multispectral capture icon is available as a push button on my toolbar if that's enabled for you. Otherwise, <clears throat> otherwise it's available as a drop down from the camera menu and capture, multispectral capture. If you find that multispectral capture is grayed out or if the toolbar icon is grayed out, it simply means that you have not successfully completed your multispectral settings. You must have two or more channels defined in your multispectral settings before being able to use multispectral capture. Refer to the video tutorial on how to configure your multispectral settings before proceeding. This is a process that's done infrequently, but uh, you would need to be familiar with the multispectral settings as it controls the channels used for your multispectral acquisition. I'm now going to click the multispectral capture to bring up the wizard. Some of the first things you'll notice with the wizard are you have a sequence of thumbnails across the bottom. These correspond to the channels defined by my multispectral settings and hopefully corresponding to the dye samples in my uh, slide as well as to my filter cubes. This particular tutorial we're looking at color camera input. So I'll be looking at this area of the input over here and have some explanation on that in a moment. I'd also like to draw your attention to the exposure and the gain adjustments. And these are used to either simply type in a numerical value, which is my uh, personal preference, to make quick exposure adjustments. So I could just type in a value 800 if I needed to sort of double the brightness on my image versus the 400 milliseconds I have now. But if you want to make minor adjustments, you can use the scroll buttons or you can use the slider to adjust the uh, exposure time. Scroll buttons are also available for gain adjustments. You'll notice for my multispectral capture that I have uh, a lower gain and a higher exposure time as this will uh, lead to higher quality image captures for fluorescence images. When I come back through the multispectral capture wizard a second time or subsequent times it will remember the exposure and gains that I have used that are pertinent to my sample, my illumination, my dyes. So uh, the application wizard will remember those settings for you. And now to quickly go through a capture sequence I'm just going to make sure I'm on the correct filter cube. So I'm going to start with my DAP here, my blue channel, noticing that my input channel from this color camera is set to the blue channel. I'm going to open the shutter on my microscope, see the results appear on the screen, and quickly click the capture button. As soon as the image is captured, it appears down here in my thumbnail, and I can close my shutter. Because I've captured an image, that image is remaining displayed here. If I want to make adjustments and reopen my shutter and see how that looks with a live preview, I need to to click on this green triangle to resume the live preview in the image. Another way of wording that is to say that whenever this green triangle is present, your image is frozen. If you want to get a live preview, you click on that triangle and your live preview resumes. I'm closing my shutter again. So to proceed to the next 
channel for acquisition, I can either click the next button at the bottom or I could click on the thumbnail. So I'll just use next. It's now taking me to my second channel, which produces my red output. My display color choice for Mito Tracker Red is defined by this channel setting as being red. And I can make sure that my input channel off my color sensor is also set to red, as that will give me the strongest uh, response from the sensor. When I open the shutter on my microscope, I get my live preview. I can click the capture button. And as soon as the image is captured, it'll show up in the thumbnail and freeze on the screen. And I can close my microscope shutter. At this point, I could make exposure adjustments and recapture that image if I wanted to. Lastly, we'll go on to the third channel. This is my green channel. I've switched my turret on my microscope uh, to switch to a different filter cube, that is. And making sure that my channel is uh, the green channel, it's the green input channel from the camera, as well as uh, my tint or multispectral capture settings is applying a green color here. Now, if I open my microscope shutter again, my live preview shows up and I've got an appropriate exposure. So I'll click the capture button. This third channel is being displayed in the thumbnail and I can once again close my shutter. Now with my shutter on the microscope closed, there's no photo bleaching taking place. I've captured a blue, red and green channel. The next step is to proceed to the composite by either clicking on composite, in which case the composite would be generated automatically, or clicking the next to display the composite, and then clicking on the composite tool, and my composite captured image is displayed immediately. At this point, my next logical step would be to save images. If I click on this button, a save dialog will appear, giving me a choice of file name and file type to use to save the composite image and the individual channels that made up that composite if desired. If I click this option here, save composite only, then only the composite will be saved and my individual channels would not. If I select 16-bit mode, I must save the resulting image as a TIFF because only TIFF format supports 16 bits, but my composite and my channels would be saved in 16-bit if desired. If this is unchecked, you get the 8-bit version. And this last option here, start new multispectral capture sequence, when this is enabled, it means if I click the finish button, then my thumbnails will be cleared and the application acquisition process in the wizard will begin again, allowing me to start a new composition. Let's just quickly go through the save images component. I can type in anything I want into this field and elect to save them in SIF file format by using SIF file format, any calibration that was active when I acquired my images will be accurate. If I use bitmap, JPEG, or TIFF, then uh, the images can be shared with other viewers, but will not have the calibration data for further measurements within Analyze. So clicking the Save button will result in the composite being saved as well as my individual channels. And that's as easy as it is to create a composite. By clicking Finish, as described a moment ago, my process will begin again. But before I do that, I want to go back and take a look at some of these channel images that were captured. By clicking on the MitoTracker red thumbnail, I can take a look at this channel, and I see a distribution histogram showing me what the output looks like from that image. We're talking about capturing from a color camera in this instance, I have my input channel set to red because the dye uh, that I'm using and the filter cube is actually outputting a red color. You'll notice that if I were to have my channel selector set to blue from this color camera or set to green, there is really no emissions in the blue or green areas of the spectrum, so my camera does not see the channel output as uh, produced through the filter cube. So for that reason, it's important to make sure that your input channel has been correctly specified to match the output colors. Some dyes will emit a sort of a magenta color or a purple color. Other dyes will emit a yellowish color, in which case you need to have the camera receiving on more than just the red or the green or the blue channels. And in these cases, enabling the camera to be treated as a monochrome camera will uh, give you a 
better range of result, in which case your channel setting would have chosen a display color that would more accurately reflect the output of that channel. You can switch the output color channel just by simply selecting a different display color than the one defined in your camera settings. If you want to return to the original defined color for this channel, simply click on this uh, return button. There are a few more settings on this dialog that may be of interest. Uh, you can auto calculate your histogram black level and white level adjustments. So if you had a sample that was auto fluorescing, for example, uh, perhaps um, there was um, too much auto fluorescence in this channel and you wanted to eliminate some of that background noise, you can adjust the black level to do so. When adjust black level or adjust white level are enabled, it gives you the ability to control these vertical bars in your image. And what the vertical bars do is define where black begins and where saturation or white um, is uh, treated or ends. So by moving these two bars towards each other, you uh, reduce the actual uh, dynamic range output of your data and are uh, effectively clipping. But it can be effectively used to clip unwanted noise uh, just below where you want your black level and you can stretch out a dim response um, by clicking in the histogram. In this case, I'm saturating too much data, but this is a captured image, so we're not um, risking overexposing our sample at this point. We're just playing with the histogram to get the desired result. You can reset your histogram at any time. You can also hide a display color meaning it will show you the image without the display color tint applied and show it to you as a monochrome image. If you don't want a particular channel included in the composite, you can simply hide the channel by clicking mouse button here. What that does is it puts a stroke through the thumbnail and if I now click on the composite, you'll see that my composite has been regenerated with the remaining channels that are not hidden. So in this case, the blue and the green channels. Going back and re-enabling that channel means that it now gets used when I revisit the composite. Similarly, if I want to come back and reproduce a composite later from my saved channels, I can click on my open file dialog and I can load images from those that I saved previously. Once you've loaded an image, you can then produce a composite from several different channels that you've loaded up and you can manipulate their histograms accordingly. It's important to remember that if you've manipulated the histograms to reset those channels prior to beginning your next set of acquisitions, otherwise that histogram can be automatically applied. You can also disable the automatic adjust black level and white level by disabling these checkboxes to prevent the histogram stretch being applied. For each individual channel that we've collected, you can apply a pixel shift adjustment, positive or negative, to help align channels that have uh, become shifted when you rotated your filter wheel. Um, if the color alignments do not align perfectly, you can shift each individual channel and the result will show up in your composite. And lastly, there's the zoom function here in the preview window and the captured window. So if you're working to uh, look at the level of saturation you've attained or the level of focus that you have, you can in fact zoom in on the uh, image using that tool. So that in a nutshell is the color composition capability that's part of the new multispectral capture wizard. If you have a monochrome camera, you can review the monochrome capture multispectral wizard tool uh, video tutorial. And don't forget that there's the multispectral settings video tutorial as well. And that concludes our video tutorial for color camera multispectral capture.